and try to explain how we get to where we're currently at, but from a 3D model point of view. So in terms of our detailing, this is what we can see. These are our 2D sectional details, and I've created these mostly just using fills, as I tend to like to do. I'm also working at a scale of 1 to 5, because at 1 to 5 we can see enough information to be able to understand exactly how building elements go together. That's exactly what I'm about to explain. So in order to get this two-dimensional view, where do we start? Well, we're talking about a 3D model, and we generally navigate the 3D model based on floor plans. And of course, from there we can show all in 3D or however we want to do that to be able to see the 3D model. And we can add a lot of detail into our 3D model. So we can see, if I get very close, that I have tapered the roofs and I do have some issues with my roof connections here, but I can fix that up. I've got balustrades, so there's a lot of detail. And then if I even go and view this in other orientations, such as sections, and I zoom in, we can see that it's not just a, a basic shape or a solid element, but this roof is actually made of a, a composite. So it's here describing roof sheeting, battens and insulation, I'll turn the true line weight off just so it's a bit clearer. Orientated strand board, frame, and insulated or rigid insulation, depending on what type of construction we're talking about, more OSB. And the wall is the same, similar sort of idea, and the floor is the same, similar idea. So we're making composites, and those composites therefore show a three-dimensional object, and they also show two-dimensional breakdown of spaces, but it's only of extrusions, so it's not actually showing each of the battens, it's just showing the same materiality extruded along a path. So that's good, but it's not perfect. So if we actually want to understand it in perfected detail, we need to draw over the top of that or add in other information. Now I could three-dimensionally draw every batten, but it's not justified for what I'm trying to achieve. There's no need to draw every baton. So if I want to see that detail, how do I do it? Well, one of the ways of doing that is to create a detail marker. So I can draw a detail marker with my detail tool. Find this one here. I can draw a box around this area. So let's go and do this over here. So I can go to my detail tool. I'll pick up the settings for this one by going Alt. And let's draw a box. We're going to draw a box over what we want to see in detail and then we'll position where we want the marker to be. And then I can open this up, select, right click, open with source view. And what did it do? It took me somewhere different. Why? Because of the way that I created that detail. So if I go back to it, the problem is I have this as a linked marker. I haven't Let's go back. I haven't made this into a source marker. If I was to redraw this as a source marker, so let's get rid of this one now, go back into my settings, and this time, instead of place linked marker, create a new detail viewport. So if I now do the same thing, click where it goes to, and then go into open with current view settings, Open Detail Drawing a new tab. We can do either one of these, That's, that'll be fine. It's going to create a two-dimensional drawing of that 3D model in section. So we see that same composite of the, the floor, we see that same composite of the wall, and we see that this is not a composite, it's just a basic shape, so it looks big and black. And if I select each of these now, I don't get the, the wall or floor composite anymore. Now I get fills, two-dimensional fills and lines. And so theoretically, I could edit these fills and lines to create the two-dimensional type of detail that we've been working on so far. But the problem with this approach is it's messy. It's muddling around with stuff that's already existing, and I just find a massive waste of time, and it's just annoying. More than that, this detail can be updated. So if I was to stretch some of these things, let's say I don't want these lines to be on such a steep angle, so I'm going to change them 
so they're on less of an angle. And I want this to be on less of an angle too, so I'll rotate that up to here, make it flat, let's say, and we'll split it. So I can do this editing, and then I could go back into my model and do something, and then if I was to update this, rebuild from source view, oh, all that work that I just did has now been erased. I could have, instead of editing the lines that were currently there, I could have drawn new lines. It's going to be a bit rough. I could have drawn new lines, and then if I updated the drawing, well, let's do this actually. I'll delete these ones, and then we'll go rebuild from source view. Oh, and it's kept the new lines that I've drawn, but it's actually returned to me the other ones as well. So while this is a useful function, I find it very, very frustrating for doing detailing because it's always fighting against me. I've got all this stuff that I don't want and it's harder to make it not show and then I've got all these things that I need to show and it's just not working. So what's a better way of working? How would I prefer to work? Instead of using a source referenced drawing, what I prefer to do, like I was explaining, instead of making this a source marker, if this becomes instead a linked marker, and then I create independent details. So when we go down to details here, we see we've got different ways of creating these. We can also do these as worksheets. Worksheets and details basically mean the same thing. So we've got Drawings here, you see these are the details that I was talking about before, and behind them we can add a trace reference. Now what is that trace reference? That's a trace reference of the section. So I can choose a section, in this case it's section number two. Let's choose a different one just to make it wrong. Show as trace reference. We see that that's changed because I chose a different reference. Let's choose number two, show as trace reference. So we can make these changes, let's, instead of using the viewport, use the save view now, show as trace reference. Where's the section? It's all the way over here, because that's the wrong section. So let's use this one instead, show as trace reference. So it's imported the right drawing, but now it's in the wrong place. Why is that? Partway through this project, I had to move the model. I had to move the model down 420 millimeters. Now I could move all those details down 420 millimeters to match, or there's another way of doing it, and I can move my trace reference. So if I go to trace reference here, drag reference, I can move it up 420, and that means it now aligns with all of my details. Why did I not just move my details? Because I've already placed them on the layer. And once I've placed it on the ladder, it's really annoying to have to move them. I can, but the point is I don't need to because I can just change the relationship of my trace reference. And each one of these, again, as we look in nice and close, is based on information that I can see at 1 to 5. So if I turn on true line weight, then I can see at 1 to 5 how thick are these lines, what are these lines looking like, and are they giving me the type of information the type of representation that I need. So that is what we're trying to do. In effect, what you see here is I'm creating details for all of the most important junctions in my project. So I'm not doing the middle of the roof, I'm not doing the middle of the floor, I'm not doing the middle of the suspended floor, I'm not doing the middle of a wall, because those are pretty basic. It's just the same thing repeated. But when I get to junctions, particularly creatively, architecturally detailed junctions, things like trying to create a, a window head that has a very limited lintel above that, trying to make it line up with the suffete and line up with the ceiling lining, trying to look at how to do apron flashing well so it doesn't leak, so it 
has a, a nice little sill detail. In order to make these work well, we need to draw it, trying to explain how window jams work and how the flashing over window jams work depending on the materiality of what we're using. So this takes a little bit of extra attention, a little bit of extra detail. And that's why we draw two-dimensional details, because it's not necessarily worth modeling that level of information. Not at a level of 1 to 5 where we will see that information. Modeling in section at 1 to 20 is great. If we can see this at 1 to 20 or 1 to 50, that's fantastic. That gives us a lot of helpful information that we can quantify, but we don't necessarily need to see this information at 1 to 5. So that is an example. So when we go back to our project, this is what we're looking at. Now what's this based off? I haven't referenced this to a section, but I could. So let's do that now just to make sense of what I'm talking about. So if I go up to my upper ground floor, and if I was to draw a section marker through this building element here, and we'll look this way, that's the section basically where I'm cutting, and if I was to open that one up, open with current view settings, we see that we're looking through the garage basement wall, and we see that there is a timber frame floor, there's a timber frame wall with clad, and then there's a roof above that. Now I've deliberately not drawn this roof yet, but we will be modeling this roof as we see it, just to help you understand that, that more specifically for this project. But the detail that I've been doing at the moment is really just based on more standardized construction. And so when we overlap that, if we show this as trace reference, we see it's probably in a completely different place at the moment. So I could move this so it's in the right place. Let's just grab the relationship between the slab and the wall and find the place where that matches. In this case, we're talking probably about here. And then I could move each part. I could drag this up. So we're now talking about the relationship between the roof and the ceiling. Let's drag this up. So we're talking about maybe a ceiling here. We see again that again that's slightly different, but we will work on an option that's the same as that. <clears throat> when we're talking about the window, we're now seeing the window head. When we're talking about the window sill, so let's grab this information. I might just split this. We drag that up so we can place this where the window sill will be, just to make more sense of that. What are we looking at here? We're now looking at the floor structure connection. So again, I could take this information and move it up. So we'll go from the flooring up to here. And of course we see that the window sill is up there, that's fine. And then we've got this floor in space. So then we just would need to extend each of these. So whether we truncate all of the detailing like I had it previously, or whether we separate it so it makes sense in its relationship to a section, effectively it's giving us the same information and that's the reason why we choose to show it that way anyway. So we can easily update that information as required. And then we can work on developing each of these details in more detail so they represent the true materiality of our building structure. Let's just copy another one of these. And we reduce that down. And that's all that we need for now. That's now a true representation where we have to add that cladding. So the cladding goes all the way down here. But that's now a true representation of our building as it stands. <clears throat> and we'll change that roof out next to be a different type of roof. This is more a traditional type of roof. In this case, we're looking at the roof in the opposite direction. So instead of running down to an eave, we'd have the, the roof running towards us, the gutter running towards us, the roof sheeting running towards us. So we're going to develop this 
drawing today. We're going to develop this based on the, the actual instance now that we've modeled enough of the building in 3D. But we're not going to develop the 3D model any further, at least not in this exercise. We're now going to work on the two-dimensional detailing and the constructed realities of what the building materials truly are and using referenced information, using manufacturer's specifications in order to ensure that it can be represented as it should actually be built. Yeah, a bit more work for the side, so it's a bit more realistic. Not in my class. So um, that's now what you can do in Nara's class and Emma's class. So modeling, basically modeling your site up so it can be used for the design project and stuff like that. Any other questions on that? So I want you to open up your file where you're up to. Now you can do this overlay exercise just as I have. Of course the other way is you can leave it truncated like, like we had it and then just move the reference. So you can just drag that reference around, drag that reference down, drag that reference up so it's in the right place so you can understand what it is you're trying to draw at any given time. So please open that up. Uh, I would like to just see where everyone's up to for now. We'll work through till 12, which means we've only got another half hour. And then after lunch, then I'll be helping you to build your model further, build that two-dimensional drawing further.